Hello there, this is uh, Psychology A-Level, this is the stress topic um, and in this video we're looking at ways of measuring stress in particular we're looking at self-report scales and the good news is uh, that this is going to be very familiar to you because we've already looked at the self-report scales we're just in this particular video mainly going to be talking about um, some of the pros and cons of using a self-report scale to measure stress as compared to when you use a, a physical way of measuring stress which we'll look at in in the next video so let's have a look before we get started uh, it's good to have a quick reminder about these things as we'll be talking them uh, talking about them a bit uh, within the video um, and it's easy to confuse these two terms re reliable and valid isn't it so if something is reliable that means it's consistent so if we give a um, if you use a ruler for example and you use it to measure the same thing twice you should get the same result otherwise you've got to really question what's wrong with your ruler the same thing goes with um, self-report uh, measures such as questionnaires and interviews um, we should find that if we're using if we've got a, a um, a self an interview or a questionnaire that's reliable we should be able to give it to the same person twice and get similar results if not the same um, and you know that's the ideal otherwise if you're giving it to the same person and get comp getting completely different results you've got to be questioning what's wrong with the way you've designed it it shouldn't be doing that um, thinking about validity that simply means it, that something is measuring what it's supposed to measure um, so we often use that as a definition of internal validity is it designed in a way that it's actually measuring what we want it to measure uh, if we've got a questionnaire about stress um, and it's actually measuring sadness or something else then it's it's lacking validity it's not really measuring what it's supposed to so let's look at how that applies to self-report measures such as interviews and questionnaires if we've got an interview or a questionnaire that's reliable how do we make an interview or a questionnaire reliable so first of all you need to have clear questions if your questions aren't clear then you might find again if i take that same example if you give the same questionnaire to the same person on two different occasions they might answer the same question differently each time because they think oh maybe i interpreted the question wrong last time i think it means this now so we want the questions to be clear so that we come up with the same answers each time um, also you, the data that you get out of it shouldn't rely on research or interpretation you should be getting clear data um, from your um, from your self-report method if you're going to have a reliable uh, if it's a reliable tool so um, if it does rely on the researcher interpreting it it could be interpreted differently by a researcher at different points so that would su that would suggest that it's less likely to be a reliable tool um, the last thing is that if you want, again, for it to be reliable, it should be fully standardised. So this probably applies a bit more to interviews. If you think about the fact that interviews have different levels of standardisation, um, if you're doing a an unstructured interview, uh, then that's not really going to be standardised at all. Participants are going to get quite different experiences out of that. And so actually it's not going to be terribly reliable. You're going to get, uh, you could, interview the same person and the, the conversation could go differently each time it's not going to be very reliable whereas if you've got a, a fully structured interview um, then you've standardized all of your questions and you're going to get similar answers out each time um, so that would show that that inter kind of interview is a reliable tool um, and that therefore you can use it and compare results across different groups of people um, in terms of validity then, if we want our questionnaire or interview to be a valid measure, first of all, the questions that we ask should have what we call face validity. We haven't talked about this yet, but it's basically just like a face check of what it's doing. So if I've done a questionnaire about stress and the first question is, do you like ice cream? People are going to be going what's that there for that's not measuring stress so that that's an example of a question that doesn't have face validity on a questionnaire um the next thing that we should be trying to do on an interview to, or a questionnaire to make sure that it's valid is to reduce social desirability bias if you remember social desirability bias is where we are um uh 
responding to questions uh, to in in a way that presents ourselves in a good light, kind of like we do on social media with filters and stuff. We do the same thing in in interviews. We respond to to questions in a way that paints us in a better light, and we might not kind of tell admit to things that we're not proud of and stuff like that. So we want to avoid that because then it means that we're not actually measuring what we're supposed to measure. Um, you know, particularly in terms of stress, we might not want to appear, for example, like we can't cope uh, with with various situations. So we might downplay how difficult we've been finding it or how stressed we've been. So um, interviews and questionnaires should be taking steps to reduce social desirability bias. Um, for one way that interviewers can do that, for example, is to build a rapport with the person that, that they're interviewing. And that can go some way towards reducing social desirability bias. Uh, because if, if you've built like a, a bit of a, a banter, a bit of rapport, then you're more able to, uh, p the participant feels more able to open up. Um, and then reducing reliance on memory recall is another thing that affects, that improves validity uh, in self-report. If you're asking someone to recall things about their experiences from the past year, that can be a problem because their memory recall might not be that great, particularly if you're looking at um, some smaller things like daily hassles. The longer ago it, that is, it's going to be much harder to remember. Um, so that's an issue with stress research uh, using self-report because people's memory of, of things isn't always accurate. So we want to, if we're going to be valid and measure what we're supposed to measure, we want to try and reduce how much we rely on memory recall. So with that in mind, uh, what we're looking at um, today, this is your description part, and I'm not going to go over any of this um, because we already know it, and you can go back to previous videos if you're not sure on any of this. Um, but the way that we measure stress with a self-report scale is we either measure, use the hassles and the uplift scale, which was designed by Canna, which was 117 different items, um, and again, people tick off which of them that they've experienced. Uh, within a specific time frame. Uh, and then on the other hand, you've got the SRRS, which looks at life changes and the amount of adjustment that's been needed uh, within the past uh, six months or the past year. And that came about from uh, Holmes and Ray's study in 1967. So that's the... Uh, for the description part of this topic, you'd be describing what those two different scales are and giving details about them. And you've got all those details, so I'm not going to go over that um, just now. I'm going to focus instead on the evaluation and particularly looking at reliability and validity, as that's what we've been talking about. So when we think about validity, um, when we're measuring stress with self-report scales, social desirability bias is a really big issue. And that means that I've put the, your weaknesses here in red and your strengths in green to make it really clear. This is a real problem in this area where people we're asking people about stress and their ability to cope. They're going to downplay their how stressed they felt because it, people don't like to appear like they can't cope. They want to present themselves in a good light. So that affects validity. It's not their and measuring what it's supposed to measure. You're not getting an accurate score. Um, the second problem, again, is that it relies on recall. We've got retrospective data. It relies on people remembering accurately what they've experienced, uh, which they particularly actually if they're stressed, we know that stress causes cognitive impairment. So people's memories may not be as good as they, they ought to be in those situations. So again, it's not going to be an accurate measurement. Um, a third problem, the fact that we've got fixed values on this scale, they ignore individual differences. We talked when we looked at this as the example of, of a pregnancy, if that can be a completely different um, level of adjustment needed uh, for, between two different people. One person who's already got kids, pregnancy, perhaps not such a big deal. Someone who's uh, experiencing an unwanted or unexpected pregnancy, massive adjustment needed, massive stress associated 
associated with it potentially. So the fact that we've got um, fixed values does ignore the fact that individual differences may really affect how someone experiences all these different events um, that are on these scales. And that was particularly the SRRS that I was talking about. But, um, you know, equally, the daily hassle scale could well be affected also by individual differences. Um, however, on, to, on the flip side, uh, using a self-report method like this actually is the only way to access this sort of information on sources of stress. Um, you know, it, it's not something you can really measure in like an experiment so much. Um, I mean, you can have a think. How Can you think of another way in which we can access information like that? I mean, really, if you think about it, self-report to people telling you which of these sorts of events that we've been through, they've been through. That's really the only way you can find out about how those sorts of events affect people's lives and affect their illness levels and so on. So actually, self-report, although it is flawed, it does have a, an important place. Um, reliability then, if we look at, at reliability for these scales, um, the scales are standardised, which is really good. Um, they're clear, you know, it's uh, the same process that everyone goes through. It's not going to be a different experience for one person and for another person. Um, so that means that our, it's going to be a reliable measure. You should be able to give it to someone and uh, like one week and then give it again the next week and you should get a similar response. Um, the scale is also subjective though. On the other hand, uh, if you remember, that means it's not, not so much with facts, more with opinion. What we're getting at here uh, it's, is that it differs from person to person. That's really this, this same point about validity and individual differences, but in a slightly different way. It means that when you're looking at items uh, on the scale, uh, what you're what you're saying, some one person might might say see the term illness and injury and think, oh, I had the flu last week, so I'll take that off. Um, and another person might look at it and say, oh, uh, I broke my arm, so I'll take it off. So it's it's a bit subjective. It it differs for how people interpret it. So that can influence how reliable it is, um, because you're not necessarily going to get the same responses each time. Okay, usefulness. Um, one other key problem is that actually it's um, only useful for adults. Um, and someone's, you can read the details of this one in your booklet, Itula Abumir has actually developed a version for teenagers um, and found that things more like um, unwanted pregnancy um, and it includes things like getting married, death of a parent, divorce of parents. So it's quite different issues, uh, really, that came up as being um, in different places on the scale. Unwanted pregnancy in that version was right at the top. So the SRRS, as we know, is only useful for adults. So it's, it's not useful for investigating stress in children. So that's another criticism that can be made. Okay, that's all in this video.